my name is Dr. Stephen Bradburn from toptipbio.com and in this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to use GraphPad to retrieve a frequency distribution of your data. So what is a frequency distribution? So frequency distribution can be either a list, a table or a graph that displays the frequency of outcomes in a data set. And this can be particularly useful for a variety of things, such as normality testing, checking your data for skewness, so to see how symmetrical the distribution is, looking for bimodality. Histograms are perfect for this, as opposed to box plots and QQ plots, which are not really that desirable. Also, frequency distributions can highlight potential outliers in your data set. And it's very easy to find the mode, which is the most often number in the data set from a frequency distribution. Now usually a frequency distribution involves the creation of a histogram to visually inspect the distribution of your data, such as the example shown here. In this particular example, the X axis represents the data being measured. So this is usually ordered from the smallest to the largest value, and it's placed into what are known as bins. So each bin contains the number of values that lie within the range of values that define the bin. So in this example, the first bin center is five. So this means this particular column contains all of the values between zero and 10, so on and so forth. And the Y axis represents the number of values in each bin. So let's go ahead in GraphPad and create a frequency distribution of some example data. So for this tutorial, I'm going to select column, table and graph. And I'm going to click the start with sample data to follow a tutorial. And then under the special uses of column tables, I'm going to select the frequency distribution option. And then I'm going to click the create button. So I'm going to minimize the note that's been displayed here. In this data set, there are 50 individual data points. And what I'm going to do is just rename this as ages. So we're going to pretend that these are 50 individuals of different ages. To generate some frequency distribution of this data, you want to go to analyze click this. Under the analyze data wizard, you want to find the option for frequency distribution under the column analyses header. And then on the window on the right, you want to enable all the data sets that you want the frequency distribution for, and then click the OK button. So the next window is the parameters window where you can tweak the options for the frequency distribution. So let's go through each of these options in more detail. Under the create subheader, there are two distributions that can be created. The first is a frequency distribution. So a frequency distribution is a histogram where the values in each bin are separated. So this can be seen on screen and it's one that you've seen previously. On the other hand, a cumulative frequency distribution is a variation of this histogram where the values in each bin are cumulatively added onto each other. So in theory, the end bin will contain the total number of values. So this can be seen on this graph. As well as graphs, GraphPad will also return data in a table form. And there are three options for this. The first being the number of values. So this will return the number of data points in each bin. The next option, relative frequency, and this can be in fractions, this will return the fraction of values in each bin rather than the actual number of values in each bin. Similarly, relative frequencies in percentages will return the percentage values in each bin rather than the actual number of values in each bin. There's also what is known as the bin range. So this is where you can actually define the bin range itself or you can let GraphPad do it for you. So at default, these are the center of the first and the center of the last bin are selected as auto. So this means GraphPad will look at your data and define the best center of the first bin and the best center of the last bin. You can also define your own by clicking this box here and entering a value into this window here. So if I chose five, the center of my first bin will be five as opposed to zero. And then I could check this one and I can make the last center say 95. Alternatively, you can also hook a value by clicking this hook icon here. So if you had data from a previous analysis or some data entered into the info sheet, you can actually use these values instead as the center of your bins. So how important is the bin range? Well, if you see in this example, the center of the first bin is zero. 
and the center of the last bin is 90. Since the first bin center is zero, this will contain values between minus five and positive five. However, in our data set, we only have positive numbers. So the first bin can only contain values between zero and positive five. So this is a very important point to remember, especially if your data contains only positive numbers, such as percentages. In this next graph, the center of the first bin is now five and the center of the last bin is 95. So this is more ideal since the first bin will now contain the values between zero and 10. And this range is equal throughout the frequency distribution. So just notice how the two graphs differ by just adjusting the center of the first and the center of the last bin. Another important point to remember is when you have values which can be on the border of bins, so if one bin goes from 3.5 to 4.5 and the next goes from 4.5 to 5.5, a value of 4.5, which is technically in the middle, will end up in the second bin. So the bin that goes from 4.5 to 5.5. So next, there's also the bin width that you can change. So again, at the minute, this is set to choose automatically. The graph pad will define the best width for your bins. The next option, which is bin width, you can actually specify your own width if you so wish. Or again, you can hook a value from a previous analyses or info sheet. If you select the no bins option, this will return all the values in the data set and count the number of times they appear. So like the bin range, the bin width can actually dramatically change how your frequency distribution looks. So to show you how the bin width can change your frequency distribution, take a look at these three histograms, which present the exact same data. However, they just differ in bin widths. The histogram on the left, this represents a bin size of around 30 for this data. So this is technically too large of a bin. And there'll only be a few bins in this graph so you will not get a good sense of how the values distribute. So if you now take a look at the middle bin, this is using the same data, but using a bin width size of two. So this is giving you two smaller bin width. Many bins might only have a few values here or none at all. So you would not get a good sense of how your data are distributed. And finally, there is the histogram on the right. So this represents an optimal bin size for this data set, and this is 10. So this allows for a better view of the data distribution compared to the other two. So how do you select the optimal bin width? Well, this depends on the sample size of your data. So if you have a larger sample size, you can have smaller bin widths and still have a smooth frequency distribution. Letting GraphPad decide on the bin width is usually best. Underneath the bin width, there's also what's known as replicates. So in our data set, if we had replicates, we can either choose to bin each replicate, so that would treat each replicate value as a separate value, or you can bin only the means. So GraphPad will firstly average these replicates and then take the mean value to put into the bins. So let's have a quick setup of a frequency distribution for our data. So what we're going to do is create a frequency distribution as opposed to a cumulative distribution. And I'm going to return the number of values in a table. I'm going to specify the bin range as the first sensor being 5 and the last sensor being 95. I'm also going to let GraphPad choose the bin width for me because I usually find this works best. And under the new graph, this is specifying what type of graph you want to return. So at the minute, this is selected as a bar graph. So the bar graph will create a histogram, which has been previously shown throughout this tutorial. As well as this, you can also select the XY graph in terms of points. So instead of a bar graph, this graph will plot a single point to represent the number of values in each bin. And also, there is a XY graph with histogram spikes. This plots spikes instead of symbols on the histogram in an XY graph. And this graph has X values, so you can fit a Gaussian distribution to it. On the other hand, the bar graph does not contain X values as these are category names, so it's not possible to plot a curve onto this graph. So if you wanted to plot a Gaussian distribution to the graph, select this option. But for now, I'm just going to select bar graph. And another useful thing to remember is that there is the learn button. So by clicking on the learn button, you'll be taken to the GraphPad website. So here you can learn more about the frequency distributions and the settings that we've just talked through in more detail. So I definitely recommend that you click this and just have a quick read over the frequency distribution section to get a good feel for the different options available. So let's go ahead and run this to see what we get. So click the OK button. 
So the first thing you'll notice is that there is a new result sheet that has been created. What you'll see is this result sheet is actually split into two parts. There is the frequency distribution, and this contains the bin centers and the number of values in each bin. So the first one, for example, five represents the values between zero and 10. And you can see in our data set, we have four values which are between zero and 10. So, so on and so forth. The second part of the result sheet is called descriptive statistics. This will give you a few statistics about your data. For example, the N number, the number of samples that have been binned, the minimum value in our data set. So this is two to so two years old, 25% percentile. So this is the first quartile, the medium value, so the middle number, the 75% percentile, which is the third quartile, and the maximum value. There's also the mean value, so the, the average of all our values in our data set, the standard deviation, uh, as well as the standard error of the mean. And finally, there is also the 95% confidence intervals for our data set. So as well as data in a tabulated form, in the frequency distribution part of the result sheet, there is also two graphs that have been created. So the first is a frequency distribution chart. And when going on this, I'm just gonna select the default option for the graph. So this graph may look a bit messy, and this is because we have a lot of data values. So we've got 50 data points, which are represented on the x-axis, and these are listed in order. So it ranges from one, which is the first data point, to 50, which is the 50th data point. And the y-axis will represent the actual value for each data point. In this case, it's the ages. So a better way to see the frequency distribution for this data set is if you go to the second graph, which is the histogram. So this is the histogram for our data set. So the x values are the bins. So these represent the center of each bin. And then the y values are the number of values or data points in each bin. So a good thing about graphs on GraphPad is that if you scroll over each column, you can actually see information about that column. So for example, in this first bin, you can see that the Y value equals four. So this means in this particular bin, there are four values. So this histogram itself is actually a bar chart representation of the frequency distribution in the result sheet. So as you can see, in each bin, you've just got the number of values. And that is what's di actually displayed in the histogram itself. So in conclusion, you've learned how to generate a frequency distribution of your data. By running a frequency distribution, you can check for a variety of things in your data set, such as outliers or skewness, and you can find out what the mode value is, as well as looking for aspects of bimodality. So I always recommend when you first get a data set is to start off with some frequency distributions to get a feel for what that data is like.